again and welcome to Man's Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrett. And we almost went into the studio today. <laughs> um, <laughs> almost, but then almost. I thought we it were this close. We could have gone in. Um, we we could have, but I kind of like the idea of waiting until, you know, so, we have the all clear to go have a cup of coffee, like free people afterwards, because that's right. always been our ritual. And, right. you know, I'd love to, to, I mean, both to emphasize to people back home how long this is going on, right? But then also, you know, to be able to support, uh, you know, the small business owners in downtown Manchester. Yep, so. I agree. So, and, and on a spoiled note, it is kind of, um, except for the fact when we have technical issues because Tammy forgets to put her speakers on, um, it is faster actually for us to do it this way crazy it, it really is and although i look uh you know very put together from from the waist up i do have <laughs> pants on i have they are on. <laughs> i um it does force me to get out of my day pajamas um i do get dressed every day but i mean i do throw on a sweatshirt and jeans or whatever because i'm usually working outdoors because i'm trying to take advantage of any dry day we have um but anyways we we got off i agree i it uh, um I don't want to get into all the details. Anybody can look on nhaconomy.com to see what the permissions have been given to whom to open. But I guess retail um, could have opened starting yesterday. Um, a lot aren't. I know like a little gift shop down in Derry that I go to, I think she's planning on Thursday. Um, I'm guessing that people just have, like, they're not prepared. They've been home doing other things. And now all of a sudden they're like, oh, I can open again, but I have to have, you know, masks or whatever. Um, so, I, I mean, I was surprised in this morning's uh, union leader on the front page, uh, they talked about people lining up to go to the mall. Right? The yesterday. mall? Who comes so, to the mall? You know, I, I see it as a point of pride. I've lived in New Hampshire for almost 13 years, and I have literally never been to a mall here. I, I, it's just not my jam. But kudos to the people for whom it is and who wanted to go and went and, you know, supported businesses or just walked around uh, my hairdresser as everyone can see Carla it's very fine. cut her bangs yesterday we will live to regret that but so be it uh, she, she I posted on Facebook and she pinged me and she's like I can fit you in next week <laughs> yeah I've got like a lot of hair going on here I haven't even attempted to try to figure that part out I can trim my bangs to a degree um yes but, but I much, can't much do like anything how they how they say, you know, if you're in a hole and you need to get out of a hole, stop digging. Yeah. Same is true with your bags. Yeah, I was when like, you, when oh, you no, think they need a little, little bit more, you should probably more. stop. <laughs> funny. Um, so I was trying to think of what was relevant to talk about today because, you know, that's what we do. Um, so there's been quite a few articles in the paper in the past, you know, week, probably week, I guess everything that mushes together um, about the school budget. So it's that time of year at school budget time. And I, I find myself getting incredibly frustrated because I, we own two properties in Manchester. So we pay, you know, about 10,000, if not more in taxes. Um, and I know a lot of people, like all of my neighbors, you know, my neighbors on both sides of me across the street, none of them have children in the schools. And it's not that I don't think, you know, society has some sort of obligation to educate the community or any of that. But when you're talking about increasing budgets or prioritizing my tax dollars that are taken from me, whether I want them taken or not, maybe some of the things should be things that actually directly impact me as a taxpayer. So the, the one thing that is, um, I think we can quantitate in a way that people might understand are paving of roads. You ask anybody, all you have to do is say, is there a road in your neighborhood that needs paving? And they all come back with, oh, it, the roads are awful and the sidewalks are a disaster. And the sidewalks, quite honestly, in Manchester have been a disaster for a, more than a decade. Um, but roads are bad. Everybody's got a road that they drive on regularly that they think, geez, this is just really bad. Um, so should we be spending more money on, I'm gonna pick on the schools just because they are disproportionately spending increases. We have a 14% decline 
in our student population get a 15% increase in spending. You and don't have to be real smart that, to figure out that that doesn't make sense. I mean, it, it doesn't make fiscal sense. And I don't think we have a true sense yet of maybe what the education landscape is going to look like right. in New Hampshire going forward. I think that it will be interesting to see given this, uh, you know, massive pivot and this movement towards, um, towards, you know, homeschooling or remote learning right. uh, and all of that, whether I anticipate actually that the, the enrollment will go down even farther than the 15%. So just so people understand back home, we are talking about increasing a budget by 15% mm -hmm. while decreasing the people who need the services by 15%. So if that doesn't say to you, hmm, what's going on here? You know, like, right. what is that going for? What is it necessary for? Then, you know, you're not asking the right questions. But, but to your point, my, you know, I have a good friend who, um, actually a mutual friend, who's in a wheelchair and we try and go out at least once a week to, you know, hit up a trail, make sure, you know, we're getting some sunshine and like all that good stuff. And uh, she's down on second street. And if you want to talk about bad roads and bad sidewalks, um, you know, that stretch could certainly use a little, a little tender love. And while we're all closed down, I don't understand why we haven't had, you know, massive amounts of crews out working on things that actually need to get done. You know, if they want me to pay my taxes, which as we all know, yeah. I am not super psyched about right now, then, you know, I'd like to see a little bit of re a return on my investment. If I'm paying to be enslaved, then can I get something I want out of this too? Well, and that's what I, that's the, where my brain is too. It, I, just looking at one of these union leader articles, there's a bunch of comments from Mike Porter, who's the Ward 8 alderman. Um, he's saying, he's the one who says, um, you know, the 14% reduction in student, 15% um, increase in um, expenditures. Now, just for this year's budget, and this is something else that people need to remember, that when we increase this year's budget by a certain amount, that just means next year's is automatically that much. And then they want to usually increase it that same amount again. So every, this isn't like one time things. So by the time, um, some of the things in this article, they're, they're looking at um, almost $2 million, $1.85 million to hire new staff, new staff to improve the structure of the school district. $1.85 million in new staff, not even raises for existing staff. And that'll include some school psychologists, human resource specialists, and English as second language teachers. First of all, mm, no. <laughs> I don't know how else to say. Then he's talking about, I mean, we look at the, um, the teacher's contract that was recently approved, which has significant raises, even though they don't sound significant when you say, 1.5%. But when you look at the number, the district's cost for one year, for the school year starting 2021, which is the one that's coming up, is over $5 million because of that contract. Because so, of, by the way, you know, a, a pretty much secret contract that took years to get negotiated, which was passed in an emergency meeting that did not allow for public commentary under Joyce Craig's transparent leadership. Uh, so basically, Joyce Craig has given us contracts that the public have no say in. Hoover will 2.0 under the Amiskeg Bridge, roads that are falling apart. Um, you know, like, I, you know, at a minimum, if you're going to tell everyone to sit at home, could you convince me that I need your services or what you're doing? Right. So quite a few, I, went, I asked Dan just because I didn't want to be just randomly saying numbers. I don't remember what meeting it was at, but I remember a few years back, um, the highway department guy had, was um, discussing with the aldermen the cost of redoing roads. Now, just for clarification, I don't recall if this was the cost for DPW to do it, if this was the cost for the contractor to do it, if this was resurfacing. 
repay, you know, like there are a million little variables that could go into this. But at that time, the number that stuck in both Dan and I's head was that it was a million dollars a mile. We could debate whether that's an appropriate number, whether that seems insane, but let's just go with it costs a million dollars a mile to redo the roads. With the caveat that that is in fact an insane amount and I'm pretty sure if we had a free market in who would build the roads, yeah. it would be a lot. Cheaper. Well, I, that's what I mean. I don't know. I know like the, uh, in our neck of the woods over here, um, Bedford just did Donald Street up to Market Basket and then the side roads because I think they were replacing the water um, lines there and everything. So Continental Paving was doing their paving. So you know, I don't know. I don't know what, what the number is. I'm sure we could look it up, but for the sake of ease of math and just to make a point, let's say it's a million dollars a mile. So I did some quick mapping this morning. Um, Gold Street. I don't know about anybody else, but if you've driven from South Beach Street to Walmart on Gold Street, you are dodging huge potholes. It is an absolute mess. Um, just a mess. Um, that's 0.6 miles. Donald Street over here, you've got nice shiny road in Bedford, and then you hit, you know, the war zone down from the Bedford line to Milford Street. There's more than that, but let's just take that. That's another three tenths of a mile. West Hancock Street, which is down in front of um, the second street lot, um, that's 0.3 miles. That stretch from Walgreens to Families in Transition is awful. Um, Second Street from Queen City to Granite Street, that stretch. Uh, Bodwell Road over on the east side from like Cohas Avenue down to Megan Drive is about a 1.1 mile stretch that has potholes everywhere. Um, Candia Road under the 93 overpass, if you even just go from like St. Pius Church to Wendy's, I'm sure it needs more than that, but take that into consideration. And then just one neighbor, one west side on um, Dubuque Street between Amory and Kelly. Just those streets, just those little bits, not talking about all the peripheral streets. I'm sure there are endless streets that need paving. That's 3.5 miles of paving. So that's $3.5 million to do just those few roads this year alone. We don't have to do them every year. But instead and of saying remind people back home, like this isn't a, a, a trade off, right? Like a, it's not saying, hey, if we did these roads, you know, the schools are going to become awful no. or like this, you know, it's like everything that's coming from the school side is also like, hey, we just want these extra bells and whistles. And a question I have, you know, and that I think people should genuinely start thinking about um, as, as we come out of this situation, you know, is to analyze what that relationship is, right? Like, what are we paying for? What are we getting in return? Is this a fair trade-off? You know, should we maybe realign some, some interests? You know, should we be looking after the taxpayer maybe in a better way than we are right now? Maybe we shouldn't just be dictating, give us money, give us money, and just giving it to their cronies and all of that, right? So I do think that there are opportunities here. I have this radical notion that I just want to, like, throw out there. I don't know that, you know, the time is right or anything, but, um, you know, I've, I've been playing with this idea of like my education, my choice, right? So this idea that the money should be allocated to the children, right? Because we're all claiming that the reason why we have this, this education structure, I personally think Claremont was wrong, but you know, the New Hampshire constitution does talk about cherishing education. And obviously like, you know, you want smart citizens so that you, you don't end up in the situations we're in right now, quite frankly. So what if we had like a pay as you go system. You know, I don't see why on, on my little street, I, I'm surrounded by three really awesome ladies, their husbands have passed, uh, they're paying, you know, significant property taxes, their children are all grown, some of them didn't have children. So I'm like, why are they paying where they can barely, you know, either, you know, someone's getting a handout somewhere else, 
you know, because, uh, you know, they have these obligations here or there. What if over time we just actually started to move to a model that is you pay as you go, the money follows the child so the child can decide and the parents can decide the school works great, homeschooling is going to work, some kind of combination of, of remote learning. Like, I feel like there are some real opportunities and I'm deeply disappointed actually by that, that Manchester Proud group that came out with this plan, which there are parts of it that I genuinely really like, you know, they talk mm -hmm. about magnet schools, which is just a fancy way of saying, okay, let's break the education monopoly in a different way, you know, so sure we can call it that if that's more palatable to everyone. But now you see they're just knuckling down and they're saying, well, these proposals were made in this Manchester Proud document and we're just implementing them, which is where the 15% comes from, right? Oh, we need all this new staff and we need all this new stuff. And I think we should be thinking in way bolder ways. Like, let's not just keep like, you know, trying to fix it on the ends or just make the budgets bigger and bigger. Um, you know, New Hampshire has an elderly population. Uh, people are on fixed incomes. We can't afford constant property tax increases. Please do not forget if you're at home, your property taxes are going to go up this year. Mm -hmm. Although you have been deemed non-essential and told to sit at home. So, uh, you know, I think all these questions should be asked and the questions, we shouldn't just be trapped in this, well, this is the way we've always done it thing. Let's be like, wow, can we come up with cool new ideas? And I think a cool new idea is to say, X amount of money is allocated to every child. That money is actually like given to the parents and they can decide. And what would be an advantage of that is actually that then you create stakeholders, the parents who could say, hey, why like, why have we hired 19 new staff members? Or, you know, what am I getting in return for every time I'm paying more and more and more? Because currently the way it works is because we've socialized um, the, the pain of the payment, right? Like everyone, carries a little bit so no one yeah. except Carla possibly no. gets mad enough to be like wait a second what is happening what's going on but I think if we change that model the parents will actually get a sense of engagement and if we want to fix the problems in the state and in this country we need smart people who are engaged and so Let's fix the roads, but let's also start to think about fixing things in in exciting and bold new ways. Like we don't have to, why, why are we still doing things the same way we did them 150 years ago? It doesn't make sense. Look at all the tech we have now, you and me talking to each other every week like this, you know, people can teach like this. And also there are brilliant teachers, right? Really so are. people can go and they can learn from the best teacher. Like, you don't have to settle just then. Well, so one thing I caught in this article, I was just browsing because I was like, why can't I put my finger on it? So you're talking about, you brought up a, a good point to make this juncture. So, you know, this remote learning thing has shown us a lot of things. This has shown us that, you know, some parents are going to tell you, I, I can't manage education for my own kids. You know, like us. I just can't. I've tried this at home. It's just not going to work. There are going to be some people who, who would just prefer to put their kids in this public school and be done. There, you know, there are a wide variety of options out there. Um, things certainly have changed. Technology should be changing everything in government because technology changes things. It makes certain things significantly easier. Um, the school superintendent, who uh, Victoria will say she's very disappointed in, um, made this comment which really kind of rubbed me the wrong way he said although our enrollment is dropping we also have to remember that we have students that have a lot different needs than the manchester of 10 or 15 years ago and it is a much different world to reach them and provide the supports they need i don't think his idea of change and my idea of change are the same I do agree that the needs of students have changed. 
I don't think that they've become more burdensome, nor should they be more burdensome. I think we have taken on aspects of children's lives that quite honestly should be taken on by their families, you know, just in this whole scenario. And I'm not saying I want to starve kids or anything, but we, when we close the schools, we continued to feed kids lunches via bus because p people can't feed their own kids. I don't understand why are they getting food stamps if they aren't feeding their kids. Cause I thought that was the whole, you know, that was the whole reason for them thing. So we've got a superintendent who thinks that we have to have, I mean, they want to add a school, a school psychologist, human resources specialist and English as second language learners. I do not believe that we have more 10 years ago. We had 68 languages being spoken in the, in Manchester schools. I doubt it's any higher than that. Now, I don't think our, I don't think our population has become more diverse. I think it's about the same as it has been for the past decade. But we're wanting, he's wanting to spend, you know, $1.85 million, which is 1.85 miles of road, instead on, on some positions, HR positions and school psychologists, or we could do Second Street and West Hancock and Donald Street and Gold Street and Candy Road. This is the reality. There is not an endless pocket pool of money that we, well, there is, it's your tax bill, but we're, I think we don't prioritize. I don't think we look, I don't know why people don't, why it doesn't bother more people more often that when they're paying three, four, five, six, seven, ten thousand dollars a year, they're not getting more for their money every year when those taxes go up. I don't well, get we're more. We're not getting more, but the thing is, you know, it keeps going up. We don't get more for it. And then the the trade-off is also what could you as a you know free human being be doing with that money? Yep. Uh, you know, like if, if I, I think if we frame things in a different way, right? So if we take Carla's radical notion of education and we put it in a different lens where we said, hey, wouldn't you like to have 50% more money a year, right? So let's say that if we, if we did say the, the money followed the child, um, you know, and, and I think my property taxes are close to six, seven grand, right? So let's say I would still pay for city services. I would like my potholes filled. I'm glad someone picks up my trash. I still believe every one of those things could be due privately and cheaper government. There's an app for that, as I like to say. But, you know, like if you had, I think a way for people to look at it is not only, you know, the way that that people who don't like our positions frames things, right? Which is automatically like, oh, you hate children, you hate education, you hate, right? I'm like, I hate no one and I have no enemies. That's right. how I approach life, right? So I'm like, no, none of those things are true. So can we stop framing things with the wrong frames? So then, you know, let's get rid of that. So assuming no one's hating on anyone, then it's like, what's best for everyone because the problem we have now is that we government has gotten so big and the unions are so strong and the incentives you know even with all this care money coming in you know if you're talking about 1.25 billion dollars that's a lot of pennies that are going to start to be handed out and that's a lot of people with their hands out now there is maybe i think out of that you know some portion seems to be being allocated to to the actual taxpayers and to small businesses and all of that right mm -hmm. but we know a lot of it is going to go to government employees to you know be like thank you for doing well we're already seeing, we're already seeing it. firefighters job. firefighters and police officers are getting 300 dollars extra every week Oh, $300 extra on top of, on top at least of their normal law enforcement. Salaries. Do you remember two years ago when, when on top of their above market salaries for the work they do, plus the 
astronomically ridiculous benefits that people can get, which means that I will never be able to retire because I have to pay for someone else's pension yep. so that they can stop working when they're 50. Yep. They've been getting danger pay and hazard pay for several years now that was based on the opioid crisis, a crisis, by the way, that we do not hear about anymore <laughs> because it's not expedient. So for everyone who's back home, please also remember you are constantly being manipulated by the news cycle. And so this one was a big one. I mean, they hit us with the COVID whammy, right? I mean, it's it's impressive. You know, and the language that we're seeing now is also things like, well, this is just gonna be the new normal. And Tammy, this should not be the new normal. This is abnormal. We should not stand for this. You know, the, the, all of this is nonsense. So they're gonna be getting more of their payout. They're all gonna get richer and richer and richer. Well, we are told we're not essential and we're all going to get poorer and poorer. And there is a better way to do this that is honestly fundamentally fairer in the terms that they like to use and more e equal and e what's the equimonious, whatever the word is, um, for everyone. And that approach is the free market that allows everyone to decide for themselves what works best for them and we know if it works to make your iphone and your android cheaper and your lasik you know eye surgery cheaper and every time we get the government out of something it gets better and cheaper and we can do that with education we just actually have to break this monopoly and say to people there's a better way and we can do it and we shouldn't be scared. And the teachers who love to teach will still be able to teach. They'll have smaller classes. There'll be less red tape. It's all possible. People just have to believe it and do it and vote for the right people. So on the normal mode, because we're running out of time, but I did want to say this. So there was also an article, which I just, the word normal, it's true. Um, solid waste, the drop-off facility is returning to normal hours but i want to remind people there is absolutely nothing normal about the hours that the drop-off facility are open um they're going what? back to their normal oh. hours of monday through friday 7 30 to 3 and the first and third saturdays from 7 30 to 1. so if you think that normal and accommodating to all the taxpayers is every other saturday actually only t two saturdays a month then you should probably rethink what normal actually is. Um, and are, uh, lest we forget, all these people, not one city employee, not one city employee nope, everybody's, was everybody's being paid or lost their jobs or did not get paid during this time, yet somehow nothing could be open to service the people they have punished. And on that note, we're probably out of time. If you have any, if you want to tell us about bad roads, email us at manchtalk at gmail.com. You can find us on Facebook also. Otherwise, maybe next week we'll be in the studio. Um, enjoy that Hopefully. weather out there. Saturday is supposed to be dry and sunny. So get some yard work done. Get out and take a walk. That's all I got. And anyone who cares about right to know New Hampshire, we have our annual meeting. It'll be in Zoom on Saturday if anyone wants to join in. That's uh, for open government advocates. People who believe in transparency will help us better uh, govern. Uh, please get involved. You can find out more at Right to Know New Hampshire online or on Facebook. Awesome. That's all we got. Bye, Thanks, guys. guys.